Hi all, I hope all you are all well and washing your hands frequently and probably like me, uh, self-isolating at home, I hope, if you can. Uh, so yeah, things are tightening up here in the UK. Um, I thought I would still cover a few of these World Championship candidates games. They're not really being played under the most ideal circumstances, I feel. Uh, perhaps the whole thing should have been postponed. But um, hindsight, or maybe there was enough warning at the start. Yeah, it should have been postponed. But anyway, let's have a look at the second round game, Maxim Vachelagrave against Ding Liren. So E4 from MVL for short, Maxim Vachelagrave. We have e5, knight f3, knight c6, Roy Lopez, okay, bishop a4, knight f6, white castles, bishop e7, rook e1, b5, bishop b3, black castles, h3. It's all, it all looks pretty bog standard stuff here. In fact, I would say this is one of the more solid openings black can use. Uh, so we have a3, queen d7, knight c3, Rook f8. This is interesting. I think Nigel Short popularized this idea of just clamping down the d5 square, not playing for like c3 or d4 later. Just just keeping an eye on d5. So that's an interesting um, uh, kind of recent, more recent development. I think in the last few years, Bishop d2 was played. Here uh, there are several high-level stem games. Knight e2 was played in the game Anand against Aronian in the mains tournament of 2007. And that game ended in a draw. There's quite a few draws actually from this position. So bishop d2, we have knight d8. Knight d5, knight takes, e takes, c5. Uh, so interesting, is this, is this pawn uh, giving white a space advantage, but is it sometimes a liability? Will it have to be supported with c4 later? We have a4. Uh, so the pawn is kept. If d takes c6, it does open up that bishop. You might think this is tempting. And if white plays a4, b4, maybe a5, adventurous. This position, for example, it's about equal. So that's viable, it seems, d takes. Uh, but uh, a4, we have f5. This seems maybe a little bit uh, Overly aggressive pawns don't go backwards fundamentally, basically. So it's it represents a very committal decision. Um, at the moment, there's no major tactics on this so-called diagonal of death with knight takes e5. It doesn't really work out here because black's always going to have resources like c4. If black didn't play, I'll just show you that in a moment though. Rook f8. Say say rook f8, c4. What is black actually uh, doing here? I mean, maybe f6 here, now that the bishop's closed, is even safer. Bishop's closed by saying pawn for a moment. Uh, this position, if black's playing a later f5, it's it's going to be an, an advantage for white, a small edge for white. So, OK, maybe there wasn't that much to do here for black, f5. To be fair, a takes. We have a takes, rook takes, bishop takes, and now c4. Okay, if knight takes e5 here, and then d takes, d6 check, c4 can be a response. So this is uh, showing the diagonal uh, is not that uh, dangerous. In fact, queen d5 threatening mate, and black's going to be the one uh, with a small edge here. So there's no major tactical exploitation here with knight takes e5, just c4. And in fact, it's more interesting that this c4 creates this battery, which means sometimes bishop a4 to skewer the queen and rook. So it's an interesting move trying to tempt this pawn forward. We have knight f7 being played. So if b takes, in fact, bishop a4, forget the recapture, bishop a4 skewing the queen and rook and winning material. Yes, that would be pretty nasty if the queen moves just to take the whole rook. So this is, uh, yeah, disaster for black. So knight f7 was played. C takes, and again, this pawn's immune because of bishop a4, so g5. So really aggressive uh, play from Dingleron. I'm not sure he would even usually play like this. I don't really, I, I don't know how, how much the games are biased. Um, it seems really overly aggressive stuff. Um, perhaps something before the whole f5 was, was safer. It doesn't seem to be very solid now for black. 
uh, based on uh, you know the white bishops, the A file. It looks as though there's opportunity for white to break through in various places. Um, so okay, that aside, knight h2, king g7, bishop c4, king g6, g4, which uh, maybe is to dissuade h5. I mean, the king's kind of vulnerable, it would seem, on g6. This is it's this pretty unusual play from black. Okay, it's getting out of the key diagonals, trying to maybe get out of these key diagonals. The bishop might be able to slip to c3 later, so it's trying to avoid any pinned in advance, you could argue. Uh, now we have knight h6. If f4 here, just to show this, knight f3, it seems as though, for example, this position, if h5 is weighted on just to play this, this is going to be nice for white. White's going to have a big advantage there. Uh, so, um, and also, uh, it's b4 is also kind of strong as well with these ideas to try and use the fact that the king's on g6. Yeah, it it looks uh, precarious, I would say. So, knight h6, uh, queen f3, bishop d8. Here, if f takes g4, h takes, uh, this f file usage from black uh, is not that great. White's a file usage is very dangerous. And in fact, there's moves like this, which give uh, this battery here, which is difficult to kind of effectively defend when white's attacking on the queen side as well. This this could be a real disaster scenario uh, for black. Yeah, if black doesn't do anything, then knight g3, you know, coming in, Knight h5. It looks very, very bad for black. So, okay, uh, we have bishop d8, queen g2, f4, b4. Now, bishop b6, trying to keep things steady. If c takes b4, then, for example, check this position with knight f3. Uh, and in fact, because of this battery here, there's now knight d4 using that pinned pawn. Uh, this position would be very pleasant for white. Uh, the, again, the a file usage is evident here. The a file is kind of dangerous. And in fact, there might be even exchange sacks and stuff going on like that to do with that a file and the a pawn. Okay, so uh, bishop b6. We have check. Now b takes, d takes. If bishop takes c5 instead, then d4 is interesting. For example, this position. There's knight f3. So if I think knight takes with that uh, pressure on e8, potentially, knight takes g5, and bishop takes f4. This is just uh, quite bruising for black. Uh, that will be hopeless for black. So uh, it's getting difficult, though. d takes c5. Uh, these bishops are not very effectual here compared to the white bishops. It seems white's got all the targets with these bishops. Black's kind of more defensive. This bishop in particular is just hemmed in. Uh, at the moment. So we have knight f3, knight f7, bishop c3. So this is the targeting of e5, bishop c7. Okay, so here white plays a very strong move, which is made available actually by this move. Uh, I wonder if you can guess. If I give you five seconds, what does white play here? Okay, b6, trying to lure the bishop away from e5. The bishop blocks back. So if the bishop takes, then knight takes e5, and this is just horrible. Bishop b5 is actually a really neat trick here to try and get to f5, which is mating. Because uh, of queen f6, the threat of mate of queen f6 is very difficult to defend. And if bishop d8, bishop f6, threatening queen g5, and then there's no defense here. It doesn't matter about losing the rook. There's actually no defense in this position. Black just has to do spite checks. And then just gets mated, for example. So yes, uh, very, very interesting. Uh, so. Bishop takes b6 is out of the question. So bishop b8. Uh, now we have queen f5. So yes, interesting, accepting the possibility of two sets of doubled pawns, two pairs of double pawns. We have bishop, sorry, we have queen takes f5. If queen d8 here, then d6, opening fire on f7 there. Uh, this would be really unpleasant. Here there's rook takes e5, leaving the queen to be taken, because rook takes e8 is a discovered check, and this just picks up loads of material after winning the queen there. 
So uh, queen takes f5, g takes, king f6. Now with the queens off, you might think, are the problems over for black in the most part? Here, if, if instead of king f6, if h6, the problem is bishop b5, bishop c6. This is really nasty, trying to get two connected past pawns potentially. And if white can also use the c4 square or the e4 square like this, that threatens f6. And this is pretty nasty stuff. The a-file is uh, very dangerous. Black's really just tied up waiting for something horrible to happen like this. King infiltration, for example. So uh, king f6. We have knight d2, which yeah looks at you know knight e4 check. Uh, rook d8. If king takes f5 here, in fact, bishop b5 in this position, this is uh, strong again. This idea of bishop b5 to c6 is very, very strong, just really material. So uh, rook d8. Now, interestingly, a very, very interesting tactical uh, solution here. Can you guess what white plays in this position? If I give you five seconds to pause the video. Okay, d6. So trying to lure the knight away from e5, uh, put more pressure on e5 potentially. Uh, we have rook takes d6. If knight takes d6, then rook takes e5, knight takes rook e8, discovered check, and uh, this is just winning uh, material. So uh, d6, rook takes d6, and there's a problem here now in this position. Uh, basically spelled out with rook b1. Uh, so this threatens uh, things like b7 now winning the bishop. And we have knight d8 trying to parry that. So here, if bishop c6, in fact, knight e4 check, bishop, sorry, knight e4 king takes, say, for a moment, knight takes is winning the exchange, and that's winning. And if bishop takes here instead, then d takes is a very pleasant advantage for white indeed uh, this uh, is dismantling black this kind of position black's really passive so uh, we have knight d8 but now another really uh, nifty kind of tactic is played here can you guess white to play here okay b7 so if knight takes, that uh, means knight e4 check is on the cards there, four king, king and rook. So we have uh, not too many options for black that are pleasant. Bishop takes, but now, guess, the uh, final move and the game ended on this move. Or rather, don't guess, try and work it all out, <laughs> uh, clearly. Okay, bishop a5, so this is the defender trying to knock out the defender of the bishop on b7. Black's losing material. Uh, if uh, king takes, then we just play bishop takes and then just take here. And uh, there's not too much to do in this position after bishop a5. Uh, yeah, it's just the mechanism just taking on d8 and taking on b7 is winning uh, at this point. Okay, yeah, it's a, a pretty controversial tournament, I think, um, to be played. But anyway, there's some interesting games nevertheless. And um, okay, remember we've got to try and flatten the curve. There's a really funny video actually on YouTube uh, <laughs> uh, to check out. Um, if you search um, Juice Media, <laughs> the uh, yeah they've got a very interesting video which is going viral at the moment. Uh, you might want to check out. Okay, thanks so much.